Greetings. Today, I'm sharing a few of my favorite tofu recipes. These are ones I make literally all the time. They're all easy and delicious, and I hope you give them a try and love them as much as I do. First off, we are going to be making crispy baked tofu and tossing it into Korean-inspired sweet and spicy gochujang sauce. This baked tofu recipe works best with either firm or extra firm tofu, and here is an additional step I like to take to make the texture a little more chewy and meaty. Usually I freeze a block of tofu directly in the package, then I defrost it and thoroughly press out the extra water. This time I wanted to see if it made any difference to press it before freezing it. I think they came out roughly the same, but once it's defrosted and pressed, you can either cut it into cubes or tear it into irregular pieces. This is my preference because the craggy edges crisp up in the oven and they create more surface area for the sauce to cling to. Now our little tofu nuggies go into a big mixing bowl and we're gonna drizzle them with olive oil or you can use any neutral oil of your choice. A little bit of salt and black pepper and some onion and garlic powder, just for the heck of it. It's not technically necessary if your sauce is really flavorful, but can't hurt. Give that a toss. Be gentle because the tofu can be a little delicate at this stage. I find using a flexible rubber spatula really helps to keep the pieces intact. Now we're gonna toss our seasoned tofu with a few tablespoons of starch to help it crisp up in the oven. I have tested this with cornstarch and potato starch. You can make any other substitutions at your own discretion. And again, just toss to coat the tofu as evenly as possible. Then we arrange our tofu nuggets on a lined baking tray. Try to leave a little space between them so they crisp up evenly. Pop those in a preheated 425 degree oven. You're gonna bake those for 15 minutes. Pull the tray out, give the tofu a little flippy, pop it back in for another 15 to 20 minutes or until the tofu is nice and crispy and golden brown. Exact time is gonna vary depending on how much of the moisture you were able to press out of the tofu at the beginning, so just keep an eye on it. And while it's cooking, is a great time to throw together your sweet and spicy gochujang sauce. So I adapted this from Joshua Weissman's Korean fried chicken recipe. It's a lot of ingredients, but it's worth it, trust me. The base of the sauce is gochujang, which is a Korean red pepper paste. I actually see this at most regular grocery stores in the international section nowadays, but if you can't find it there, check your local Asian market. All of your sauce ingredients can go directly into a skillet. Set that over medium heat, and we're gonna just gently simmer it everything for a few minutes just to mellow out the bite of the raw garlic. If you feel like the sauce needs a splash of water to thin it out, go ahead and add it. This is the consistency we're looking for. Now mind you, this sauce can also be used with any other protein or on noodles. And now our baked tofu's done. Look at that coating. Go ahead and toss it into your skillet. Give it a good stir to get that sauce into every nook and cranny. And I love serving this gochujang tofu with fresh steamed rice and broccoli. To me, this is like a cheaper and healthier version of something I would order as takeout. It really kind of scratches that itch for me. And hopefully it goes without saying that you can make the crispy baked tofu and pair it with any kind of store-bought sauce you like for a super easy lunch or dinner. You don't have to make the sauce from scratch. This tofu recipe is super fun. I used to love eating fried eggs with a runny yolk for breakfast, and this kind of satisfies that craving for me. Now, mind you, we are not trying to make uh, some kind of freakishly realistic egg substitute today. We're not doing any like sauce stash voodoo magic here, but this is gonna be a really delicious, savory, high protein breakfast option. Simple Truth has these mini blocks of tofu that I like to use when I don't wanna make a huge amount. You can just use half of a block of firm or extra firm tofu for this, or you can make the whole block. It's really flexible. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. Cut it into slices somewhere between a quarter and an eighth of an inch, and you can blot the extra liquid off of your tofu. I usually don't bother when I'm making this though. Go ahead and grab a big, preferably nonstick skillet and add in some vegan butter or your favorite cooking oil. Personally, I always used to fry my eggs in butter, so those two flavors just kind of go together in my brain. So I'm using some Miyoko's cultured vegan butter and you're gonna pan fry your tofu slices on medium high heat, just a few minutes per side until golden brown. Then go ahead and hit those with a little bit of salt and black pepper. And while you're working on that, you can have a second little pot right next door with our runny vegan yolk sauce. Now just think about the ingredients we typically use to season a classic tofu scramble. So we've got some nutritional yeast, onion and garlic powder. You can add some paprika if you like, and then some black salt, which is gonna give it that funky eggy smell. You can find this at your local Indian grocer or online. I usually make this with water. I wanted to try using some soy milk this time to add in some extra protein. And honestly, I wouldn't bother I think the flavor and consistency is better with just plain water. You'll also need your favorite thickening starch and your favorite neutral cooking oil or some more vegan butter. Water is going to go into a small saucepan or frying pan. Add in the rest of the ingredients except for the black salt, okay? We're gonna save that to the end because it does lose a lot of that distinctive eggy aroma when it's cooked. I also added in a pinch of turmeric just for color. 
Whisk everything together and then bring it to a simmer over medium high heat and let it thicken. Make sure to whisk it regularly to prevent any clumps from forming and once it has reached a nice thick yolky consistency, you can remove it from the heat and stir in that black salt. Similar to actual runny egg yolks, this sauce does develop a little bit of a skin as it sits, so just give it a little stir before you're ready to serve it to reincorporate that. And all I do is take my little fried tofu slices, I lay those out on a plate or on a slice of toast, drizzle over your glorious, glorious sauce as much as you like. Then I like to add some fresh sliced scallions. Sometimes I'll do like a little shake of smoked paprika. And this recipe is just so delicious. It's savory, it's really simple, it's so filling because tofu is really high in protein. You'll probably have some leftover yolk sauce that'll keep in the fridge for a few days. Just reheat it in a pan with a little extra splash of water because it does thicken. The sauce on its own is just great for dipping toast in. And really quickly, before anyone says, oh, if you want eggs so much, why don't you just eat eggs? Um, silence, insolent mortal. Go watch Gordon Ramsay make undercooked scrambled eggs again. Leave me in peace. A little bit creamy, but scrambled eggs to die for. Up next, we've got a really foundational recipe for a simple crispy breaded tofu that can be either fried, baked, or air fried. Today I'm turning it into buffalo tofu strips, but you can toss or dip them into any kind of sauce your little heart desires. Firm or extra firm tofu work best for this recipe, and you can kind of cut it into any shape you like. You could do one inch cubes to make little buffalo tofu bites. Today I'm cutting them into strips, which are great for dipping. I do recommend doing the freezing and defrosting trick to make them a little more meaty in texture, but I forgot. So we're just gonna do a quick press. So after cutting your tofu, lay it out on one half of a clean kitchen towel, fold the other half over top, and weigh it down with something of moderate weight like a cutting board or a plate. Let that go for about 15 minutes, and during this time, we're gonna prepare a really simple batter. This is gonna adhere our breadcrumbs to our tofu. This will be about a fourth a cup of your favorite flour, along with a teaspoon each of onion and garlic powder and paprika. Add in salt and pepper, whisk it together, and then whisk in enough water to form a batter similar in consistency to pancake batter. You'll also wanna add about a cup of panko breadcrumbs to a dish and season with salt and pepper. You can also use regular breadcrumbs or crushed cornflakes. Now it's time to go ahead and dip your pressed tofu first into the seasoned batter, let any excess drip off, and then into the breadcrumbs to coat them. As I mentioned before, I tested three cooking methods. I baked them, fried them, and air fried them. So if you're baking or air frying them, I would recommend spraying them with a little bit of vegetable oil to help them crisp up. It's not strictly necessary, but I do just think it improves the texture. If you're baking, you're gonna bake them in a 400 degree oven for about 35 to 40 minutes, flipping them at the halfway point. I feel like different brands of air fryers vary, but in my Ninja air fryer at 375 degrees, they took about 18 minutes to be perfectly crispy. And honestly, I prefer the texture of the air fried ones to the baked ones. And lastly, you can shallow fry them in a neutral cooking oil for about three minutes per side until they're evenly golden brown. Obviously, I thought these tasted the best, but usually I'm not frying things unless it's like a special occasion. So my personal recommendation, if you have an air fryer, is to use that. However you choose to cook your breaded tofu, all that remains is to toss it in your favorite sauce. My favorite combo is Frank's Red Hot with some melted vegan butter. Barbecue sauce is another favorite, and sometimes I'll just whip up a batch of these as a snack, but usually I'm making this crispy tofu to put on top of either a buffalo salad with ranch dressing, or I'll make it and toss it in barbecue sauce to put on top of like a southern bowl with vegan mac and cheese or some mashed potatoes and a side of collard greens. It's so good. So hopefully you give this classic breaded tofu a try and enjoy it as much as I do. Before we move on, I did wanna say, especially if you are new to cooking tofu, a good nonstick skillet is going to be your best friend because tofu does have a tendency to stick, especially if you don't like to cook with a lot of oil. The nonstick cookware I'm using in this video is by Caraway, and full disclosure, they did gift us this set, but we've been testing them out for the past few months and we really do like them. They are very nonstick, as you can see, and most importantly, they're non-toxic. They're made with a ceramic coating and they're very easy to clean. They don't require any seasoning or maintenance like cast iron. I've gone through a lot of cheap non-stick pans over the years and the non-stick always wears out. Worst case, it starts to chip or flake off into the food and I definitely notice a difference in quality and durability with the Caraway. So while this video isn't sponsored, they have given us a discount code that you can use if you're looking to invest in some really high quality non-toxic cookware that's also really beautiful. They're available in lots of different colors and they come with these really nice organizers and a lid holder. And if you do use the code, it does support the channel, so thank you. And with that, let's get back into the recipes. 
Let's move on to our next recipe. We are gonna make these ridiculously easy and delicious tofu lettuce wraps. These are great when you're craving something that's really fresh and healthy and light, but that's still really filling and savory and flavorful. First, a little bit of prep work, dice up a white onion, then you're gonna mince up as much garlic as you like, and then you're gonna either mince up or grate some fresh ginger. So freezing the ginger ahead of time makes it very easy to grate, or if you're someone who's in need of recipes with minimal prep work, you can just buy ginger paste and pre-minced garlic at the store. There's no shame in that. I am obsessed with water chestnuts. I love how crisp they are. They just add the most satisfying crunch to the lettuce wrap filling. So just give those a coarse chop. And lastly, I'm slicing up a few fresh green onions. You don't have to add these. We're already adding in the white onion, I know. But if you do have them, they just add extra freshness and color to the filling. One last little bit of prep work here is to prepare your lettuce cups. Butter lettuce is my favorite to use for these, but you can honestly use whatever kind you like, even iceberg. You can also use romaine leaves, but they'll be more like tofu lettuce tacos than wraps, if you know what I mean. Now you're gonna heat a nonstick skillet over medium high heat and drizzle in a little bit of your favorite cooking oil. Crumble in a block of firm or extra firm tofu and pressing it is actually optional for this recipe. Let me explain why. Right now we're gonna pan fry the tofu until it's golden brown. If you pressed it ahead of time, there will be less liquid to cook off before the tofu starts to brown, so it will happen faster. But if you didn't press it, you'll just need to add on a few extra minutes of cook time so that the liquid evaporates first and then the tofu can brown. Once the tofu has developed some of that beautiful golden brown color, go in with your onions and stir fry for another three to five minutes now toss in your chopped water chestnuts, minced garlic, ginger, and green onions, and keep stir frying for another two to three minutes. As far as seasoning goes, I'm gonna give you two options. Number one, vegan oyster sauce. This one is mushroom based and it packs a ton of umami. It's also a little sweet. If you like the idea of making stir fries, but you don't wanna make a sauce from scratch with a bunch of separate ingredients every time, this is kind of like an all purpose stir fry seasoning. The second option is hoisin sauce, which is generally a little easier to find a lot of regular grocery stores carry it. It's savory, it's sweet, it's definitely a different flavor profile than the oyster sauce, but either one will taste delicious in this recipe. So just add in a few tablespoons of either one, along with a tablespoon of soy sauce, and then optionally you can add in some chili paste. Stir fry that till there's no extra liquid in the pan, and then these are ready to serve in your beautiful lettuce boats. I think these are great topped with some fresh scallions and chopped peanuts, or some other kind of chopped roasted nuts for some crunch. And the best part is these taste great whether the filling is hot or cold, so if you have leftovers, they make a super low maintenance lunch or dinner for the next day. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Recipes will be on my website, linked down below, and I would love to know how they turn out for you if you try them. Subscribe if you haven't already for more plant-based recipes, and I will see you in my next video.